held as a prince, from Germany capture the heart of a British queen and marry into her royal family. At a dinner party where Queen Victoria plays the piano, they make sparks fly. After being surprised, when a large hand suddenly turns the pages of her sheet music, she looks up and drowns in the eyes of a man she hasn't seen for a long time. But Albert seems like a science geek because the first thing he says almost gives Victoria a heart attack. Although now I believe you're playing the piano with few mistakes. Seeing that he has embarrassed Queen Victoria in front of the crowd, his brother, who has a high IQ, quickly relieves the situation by offering to see some of the Queen's paintings. However, this straight man is stepping on his cousin's point again. In your collection are some works by Leonardo da Vinci. Perhaps there are. I really don't know. Lord Melbourne can even listen to him without letting out a sigh. What on earth will it take to get Queen Victoria to propose to such a straightforward Albert? Victoria also excuses herself from going on a date with him tomorrow because she's got a lot of business to attend to. If this upsets Albert, he even complains to his brother in a whisper before he gets out of Queen Victoria's sphere of influence. His uncle urgently trains the straightforward Albert and explains that Queen Victoria prefers considerate men and that all Albert has to do is follow Lord Melbourne's example. But Albert resists the idea of fawning over his cousin. Back in her chambers, Victoria is not happy with him either. They agree like cats and dogs and don't believe they can marry and start a family. It's going to be a sleepless night for this man and woman. In their youth, they had not yet seen the inside of their hearts. The next day at dinner, Victoria invited her to cousins to join her for dinner. The queen, who did not have a big appetite, quickly put down her knife and fork, which meant that she had finished eating. So the waiters began to remove all the plates from the table. I have not yet finished. The queen has her highness. Albert was left to starve, and in this scene, he witnessed the queen's dominance. As he became upset, he began to come on to strong with his cousin. When Queen Victoria asked him if he'd seen her portrait. No, we went to look at the old masters. Victoria was so angry with him, she pulled out her chair and left without looking back. She went to Lord Melbourne and accused Albert of being such a prick. Victoria was angry and said she'd rather marry a married man than go on a blind date with her awful cause. Lord Melbourne understood the little girl's true feelings and just looked at her with a faint smile and no rebuttal. In her spare time, after a busy day at work, Victoria joins in a game of cards to relax. Albert was bored and chose to play the piano. In order to make them fall in love, everyone suggested that Victoria and Albert perform a duet. Victoria actually likes her cousin. Since she was given a chance, she wouldn't waste it. Their close contact eased the tension, and their wonderful piano playing won the applause of the audience. Albert, unusually, didn't say anything nasty and even praised his cousin's piano skills, which was very rare. Victoria smiled shyly, but her happiness didn't last more than two minutes before she got mad at him. I believe you do not practice at least one hour each day. The queen does not have time for scales every day. Only for card games. Perhaps because she had her too many compliments in her daily life, Victoria became more and more enamored with her cousin, who always contradicted her. On a very casual walk, she learns that Albert loves nature and forests. So the next day, she made a big show of going on vacation to Windsor Castle, inviting her cousins to accompany her. She also invited her cousin, Lord Melbourne, on whom she depended the most. It was a trip to Windsor Castle that helped Victoria and Albert bond with each other, and the biggest catalyst was the Prime Minister. Watching the old man and the young woman twirl and jump around, Albert was reminded of the gossip about the two of them being together, and for the first time, he felt jealousy. He couldn't help but approach Victoria and interrupt the intimate atmosphere between her and the Prime Minister. Lord M, who has always put Victoria first, silently withdraws from the world of the three. The young queen he guarded had finally found the right man, so it was time for him to retire. Albert pulled a dagger from his boot and lifted the white shirt from his chest. Without hesitation, he took the tip of the knife and made a huge gash in the shirt. Then he pushed the white gardenia into his chest. His actions made Queen Victoria's heart beat faster. Her heart-stopping breath was sprayed all over his face. The next day, Victoria and Albert were in love. The Queen's writing companion changed from the Prime Minister to Albert. The two youngsters played in the forest like free birds. Victoria has lost her seriousness as a queen and is acting like a young girl in love. However, their love is still fragile as they go their separate ways in the next moment over their differences in governance and Albert's jealousy of Lord Melbourne. But back at Buckingham Palace, Victoria was still thinking about her cousin. Lord Melbourne saw in the Queen's anxiety her love for the German prince. He acted as a peacemaker and encouraged Victoria to be a brave woman. Victoria listened to him and the night she dressed up and went to Albert to confess her love for him. 
she ordered her maid to pin his favorite gardenia on her head. And Lord Melbourne found Albert and revealed his true feelings. The fact is, my ministry will not last forever. And then I will return, thankfully, to rock it all. His words gave Albert a reassuring feeling and made him gradually let go of his stigma and defense against him. That night, Albert went to Victoria's appointment with great ease. Wearing a gardenia on her head, Victoria did not beat around the bush when she saw her favorite man, but opened the door and said her intention of meeting him. Albert, will you marry me? That depends. On what? Maybe let me kiss you first. Victoria danced happily with him after she got his affirmative answer. This is a precious royal love. For both of them, this marriage is not for convenience. Although their marriage has affected the countless people's attention, the couple's sweet rendezvous fell into the eyes of their uncle Leopold. His long-awaited plan had finally come to fruition. He then approached Albert, who had just finished his date, and reminded him that the most important thing was to secure his place in the English court. Indeed. This is the moment to settle your household, title, and above all, allowance. Soon after, he led his nephew to Victoria and asked her what her plans were for her husband's allowance. Victoria was only interested in marrying Albert as soon as possible, so she did not consider her husband's allowance to be of any importance. She has enough wealth that she has no difficulty in supporting a man. Albert didn't care about wealth, but he had to do what his uncle told him to do. When he said goodbye to Queen Victoria and returned to Coburg, Germany, he made a point of emphasizing to her the matter of allowances and titles. After her reluctance to let him go was suddenly interrupted by him, Victoria agreed to all of his instructions, although she felt it was a bit of a mood killer. But it was clear that nothing about the Queen was trivial. Her plans to marry and give her husband a title and so on had to be approved by a vote of the Privy Council. And as soon as she had finished reading the news, the ministers began to talk to each other offstage. Duke of Wellington went to the heart of the matter by stating that the monarch could not marry a Roman Catholic unless he or she voluntarily renounced the crown of England. His comment disrupted Victoria's arrangements and caused her so angry that she left the room immediately. Victoria returned to her study in a rage, with Lord Melbourne watching over her. The more Victoria thought about the attitude of the ministers, the more angry she became. So she lashes out at Lord Melbourne and asks him to help her solve the problem. Her action created a wave of controversy and the parliament was abuzz with dissent. How many more German princes are there hoping to grow fat on Britain's public purse? We cannot have Germans running the country! Everyone was talking about Queen Victoria's marriage, but most people were not satisfied with it. Rome was not built in a day. The royal allowance was so high that Albert's uncle became a philanderer and even used it to pay for actresses on the side. Victoria couldn't believe it either. She was finally persuaded by Lord Melbourne not to go against the other ministers. That same day, she wrote to Albert about the attitude of the parliamentarians towards him, who didn't want to give him a title or too much money. Albert was usually a science geek, but he didn't want to make any more concessions when it came to titles and wealth. He wrote one pressure letter after another and sent them to Victoria. After some mediation, Queen Victoria, who felt the increased pressure, got Albert the title of Knight of Garter and a yearly allowance of $30,000. Their wedding is now officially on the agenda.